Hey guys, now that uh, this Jeep is finally out of the way, she still needs some little things to be done, but she is ready for the road. So finally we have some time to turn our attention to some other projects that have been put to the side for a long time. And um, one of them is this GT6 transmission. Now this is not out of my GT6. It belongs to uh, one of my YouTube followers who reached out and he asked me if I can take a look at it and see if everything is okay with it because it came out of his car which he as far as I understood he never drove he bought it and he's restoring it but he doesn't know anything about the condition of this transmission the only thing he knows is that it didn't have oil in it when he got it so he asked me if I can take a look at it and see if everything is okay with it and if he is okay to put it on his car so as far as i can see he took his uh, time and he cleaned it which which is good but on the other hand i can't tell if there were any leaks or not which doesn't really matter because since we're going to be taking it apart we better change all seals so whether they are good or not doesn't matter and we're going to have to change them anyways so it's been sitting here under the table for the last four weeks i guess and i feel really bad because i procrastinated for a long time but like i said i wanted this girl to get back on the road and now that she's done i have time for this finally i'm sorry for the delay barry we are on it now <laughs> First of all, let's see what we have here. So, we have the bearing, which I think doesn't sound very healthy. It's really rough, so I guess we're gonna have to change the bearing for him. So, I'd, I better start making a list, right? So, like I said, I don't know if it was leaking from anywhere but we're gonna change the seals now this fork so the first thing i noticed right away is that this fork has been cracked many times and it has been welded but i think it was squeezed in because it is supposed to be in the center of this bearing but it doesn't go to the center it fits only up to here and also here this bow is supposed to ride here in this hole or the hole is riding on the bow whatever but because the because the pins don't don't fit all the way now here i don't know if you can see but this bow doesn't land in the center of the hole because the fork is supposed to go a little bit further in. I think it went. I was able to, to force it in, but that's, that's not really good. It doesn't travel very well because it's squeezed. Now it's supposed to ride really nice here, but it doesn't. So, fork. We're gonna put here fork the shifter it has a little bit of play here but I don't think that's too bad it has bushings if you've seen my video about the Spitfire I made my own bushings for here brass bushings we will see here I think that's acceptable but if not, we might make some brass bushings for here. So the shifter looks like it is in a good condition. Here, in a bag, it has the drain plug. Oops, so we're going to put it in the bin. Let's see what's under here. So this should be the switch for reverse. So the center one is first and second. This is third and fourth. Okay. And this is reverse so now we should be in reverse because now i can see that this shaft is the one hitting the switch so let's see 
Now if the switch works, nope. Yeah, it should beep, but it doesn't. We can take it out and check it, but looks like it is dead. So reverse switch. We barely even started and we already have a long list. All right, so I took this cover off and on the first glance, things don't look really good because uh, now I don't want to go into a full explanation of what's going on here, how transmission works and everything, but very quickly I'm going to explain just a few things. So this is the input shaft coming from that side. When you turn it, now it's in neutral. So now if you turn it, you can see this gear, which is the fourth gear. It is one piece with the input shaft. Then the rest of the shaft is separated here from the input. If I spin the output shaft, you see only this one and this one are spinning. So when you change gears, what happens essentially is you change the way this shaft connects to this shaft because we have to take the torque from the engine, from the input shaft and transfer it to the wheels, right? To the output shaft. So depending on how we connect this shaft to this shaft, we select different gears. So this is first, this is second, this is third, this is fourth gear. Now we have underneath a secondary shaft that you probably don't see. Okay, I don't know if you can see, but that secondary shaft underneath has a gear meshed with each of these four gears, fourth, third, second, and first. So when you turn the input shaft, the secondary shaft underneath turns as well. Since it turns, it also turns these three gears. But on our output shaft, we only have these two synchro hub assemblies. And uh, even though all these gears turn, the torque doesn't get transferred to the output shaft. So when you select first gear, what happens is you have the gear shifter, you push it forward and that pushes this assembly here backwards. So it goes this way. And now this gear and this shaft are connected. So now we are in first gear and if we turn the input shaft, the input shaft turns the secondary gear, the secondary gear turns this gear, this gear gets connected to this gear, to this hub. And now our two shafts are connected. The input and the output are connected through here. If we want to select second gear, this goes forward like this. And now again, the two shafts are connected, but this time not through this gear, they're connected through this gear. So the torque gets transferred from this gear to the secondary shaft. The secondary shaft is connected to this gear as well as everything else. But this is the one important now because this gear is now connected to our hub, which hub is permanently mounted on our output shaft. So now our input and output shafts are connected again, but this time they're connected through here. This is what makes the connection. Before it was here, it was making the connection here between first and output shaft. Now it's making connection between second gear and output shaft. Then we go neutral again, third. We slide this this way for third, then our output and input shaft are going to be connected here. And then if we slide it forward, our input and output shaft are going to be connected directly. We don't use the secondary shaft. We have the torque transferred from here directly to our output shaft. And that's why fourth gear is called direct because the torque gets transferred directly through here. We don't use the secondary shaft underneath. So that's basically how it works. Now let me explain something about this particular transmission. So what you see here when we select first gear, how this hub is nice and tight. Only the synchro ring for the second gear is a little bit, has a little bit of play, 
but that's fine that's absolutely normal but this is nice and tight and what happens here is there are these ball bearings inside that are holding it in place they have springs behind it and they're holding everything in place this is neutral again second gear and again this is pretty sturdy here this synchro is a has a little bit of play i don't know if that's normal maybe not but it's not such a big deal so what the synchro does is when the engine is turning with certain rpm and then the wheels are also turning on the back and you are in neutral let's say the two shafts are turning with different speed the engine is turning turning with whatever rpm that wheels are turning with different rpm and the two shafts are turning with different speed so when you want to select the gear you need to slide this over but if they're turning with different speed nothing is going to happen that's why uh, the synchro was invented at some point where when you press the clutch now the input shaft is still turning but it's turning by just by momentum so it's not connected to anything right so when you try to select first gear with you push with the selector this way that that pushes the synchro ring against here and just by the friction created between them it slows down or speeds up one or the other shaft and synchronizes them so now they speed they turn with the same speed and when they turn with the same speed you can just click and go into first gear of course that's why we need to press the clutch when we switch gears because we need to release the input from the engine this way when the synchro ring presses against here it can slow it down or it can speed it up depending on how fast the wheels are turning and because it's not connected to the engine that happens automatically it happens really fast just by friction again it slows it down or it speeds it up and it allows us to select second gear okay so that's our second and again we're in neutral but let's see something here this is now where this is the important part now about this transmission look at this hub well, it has a lot of play and uh, when we go to let's say third gear which is really hard actually to do okay so now i selected third gear let's see what happens here the whole hub is still playing and look at how much play this synchro ring has so that's not normal i'm not sure if this is only due to the bearings inside if they're missing or something I think I can see them there, but I'm not sure. But also what happens is now, if we are in third, now the two shafts are connected, right? But if you just slightly move this, which can happen very easy, now we are out of gear. So that's what happens when you have third gear popping out of gear. Your hub here is really loose and it has this play and instead of connecting the two shafts like this now now they are connected it just slips a little bit forward and now they're not connected anymore and just pops out and i'm not sure if the same thing happens here yeah you see it comes out I hope it's just ball bearings or springs or something underneath that we can change and fix it but if not we're gonna have to get new hub so that's one of the problems here another problem is that probably from display you can see these teeth here on this gear i might bring you closer let me bring you closer yeah so if we look closely here all these teeth on third gear are damaged so you see here this one for example is really bad see it's missing a piece so third gear is damaged we can tell that for sure it's damaged but look at fourth now fourth is like really bad 
and that's really bad news because look at this one because like i said the ford gear you can buy it separately it is one piece with the input shaft i don't think you can buy it new at least in most motors i don't see it available so yeah there's a series of teeth here that are really bad this one this one this one one two three four five five teeth and then this one six so we need to source another input shaft all right so anyways i wasn't gonna explain how how the transmission works and then i explained everything <laughs> anyways there's some videos on YouTube. Actually, there's a video from, I think, I think it's from 1950s or 40s, where it explains how a transmission works and it is amazing. It is, people, I can't believe that it is so easy to explain how a transmission works. So I'm gonna put a link down below here and go check it. If you don't know how a transmission works, it's explained perfectly. Anyway, so what's gonna happen, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take everything apart and we're gonna inspect also the rest of the parts and uh, we're gonna call Barry and we're gonna, tell, and we're gonna tell him what the story is and we will see how we're gonna source parts. Oh, this is broken as well. I haven't noticed that. Actually, I changed my mind. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it together. We're gonna throw some gear oil in it and we're gonna test it because I'm gonna tell you my plans I have a setup that I want to make for testing transmissions and uh, overdrives and stuff like that. So since I'm going to be doing that, I was planning to do it at the end after I finish this transmission so I can put it on the rig and test it. But maybe it's a good idea to use this transmission to test the rig, you know what I mean? So I can, so I can make the rig and put the transmission and see if I can actually find the problems that this transmission has. We will we'll pretend that we don't know what's inside and we will see if when we put it on the rig if it is going to show me these problems. So it's going to work both ways. First we're going to use the transmission to test the rig and then later we're going to use the rig to test the transmission. So makes sense? Yeah. So I'm not going to take it apart completely yet. I'm going to put it together and then I'm going to focus on the rig that I'm talking about. And that's gonna be also interesting because I have a very interesting idea about that. I also gave the owner a call and I explained to him already what happened. So he knows he's gonna look for a shaft, for an input shaft. I'm gonna look for an input shaft in the shop too. Uh, he might need also new belt housing because I'm pretty sure this is where the slave cylinder mounts and this is broken. I don't know if you can see it. This is what I'm talking about. So definitely, He's gonna need a new bell housing. So anyways, that's gonna be it for today. I don't know how long this video is gonna be. I have the feeling it's gonna be short, but with my long explanations here, it might become too long. So anyways, that's gonna be one of few videos about a GT6 transmission. So thanks for watching guys. Thanks for commenting and subscribing. And um, I'm, uh, I'm sure that many of you are happy that I'm back on trials, not on Jeeps. And, um, me too i'm also happy for now we are done with the jeep even though i haven't showed you the last episodes yet but there's two or three more episodes coming about the jeep but we are already working on something else so anyways i'm rambling now so thanks for watching i'll see you next time bye